So, uh, you know, there are, there are, uh, are there any I, I don't know, I don't know what you mean by literary fiction. Are there I, any pictures? Pictures? Are there any pictures in the book? Uh, are there any pictures in the book? Yeah, there are. If you just look hard, you'll find tons of pictures in the book. So, uh, 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 you know, there, there are some fabulous sentences actually. Like, you know, I was reading this and uh, let me see what is this. Ah, like, uh, this is a description of the project. Of the project manager, which I think is a very lovely description. I think uh, it kind of, uh, it kind of, uh, every kind of animosity that one can have for someone, it's it, it kind of titties out on the page. He, he says that uh, he's linear. In hell, they extracted every other dimension out of him <laughs> and sent him right back as a black hole that sucks happiness. And being addressed by him meant that you will forever hate this thing. I thought that was a very beautiful description of the manager because with the moment I read it, I could, I could completely see a person, you know, who can kind of, who kind of come, drops in front of you and he just sucks all the joy out of your life. And after that, you're left with this very uh, guilty feeling as to why you exist. You know? So then, then there was this again, beautiful line. Oh, this was wonderful. Daniel's all is so huge that it hugs the rest of his sentence. I thought that was a really cool sentence. And then, um, uh, this was also very nice, the image that you came up with. Take the, take the tone that is labeled matter of fact, and then the one that's labeled, this is nothing but the truth, the whole truth, and mash them together in a bowl and beat at it for hours, what comes out is the yes. I thought that was a really cool sentence. And then there was this one thing which, uh, as an actor, I kind of kept working for hours, but I just couldn't manage it. It says, uh, Amma, you're not at work? The last word italicized with moralistic derogation. Like how a politically correct, self-righteous, right-wing politician would refer to prostitution. You know, I, I mean, for two hours, I can tell you, I have worked on that. I was like, how would a politically correct, self-righteous, right-wing politician would refer to prostitution? And I'm just trying to figure out how Amar would say that word. You're not at work. You're not at work. You're not at work. I mean, uh, maybe we can have a contest here at the audience and the audience can say uh, work and definitely <laughs> where they should sound like politically correct, self-righteous, right-wing politician talking about prostitution. <laughs> so, um, I think that description was like, really cool. And now, uh, just to kind of give you a little idea about uh, what does it mean to be trippy without being trippy. We're just going to read uh, uh, a little passage from his book, uh, and this section is called Divine Interference. <laughs> I sit at the window while they watch a movie where a crow is kicking this white kung fu fighter's ass by spraying milk like a water cannon. A crow lands right on the window while I take another hit. Hey, hey bitch. bitch. Hey, bitch. That's some good shit you're smoking. Where the punk like you get a shit like this, man? That does not sound like Daniel Raman. Holy shit, it's a talking crow. What the fuck? What? You've never seen a supremely intelligent crow? No, I don't rather. I don't think so. I just take another drag just out of anxiety. Uh, yes, you have. The crows in, in, in those movies that you see, how do you think they act? They really are a slow punk, aren't you? So, you're a star crow? Of course. Is more what else do you think of? <laughs> then what exactly are you doing here, Hollywood bro? Well, I was on a holiday in India. You know, every star does that. To avoid paparazzi. I was flying incognito with a bunch of regular crows. <laughs> and then? Yet another anxious drug has a calming effect on me. Well, when you're used to the finer things in life like I am, you can't, you cannot stop by when you smell some good shit. Okay. My lips are burning a little as I'm almost coughing or coughing, coughing off the roach. Get that to me a little more. Funny thing called little by a crew. 
Oh, chill, dude. I've been playing on this India experience. He raises his wings to add the quote marks to, the, to this India experience. I'm not sort of lying. I've got the picture chip days now. You have any idea how that feels? I don't know how crows look when they orgasm, but I think he just did orgasm. Good shit, man. His fake accent fades a little with the man. Yeah, I trust my friends in there to keep good shit only. Uh, them like major stores? Once upon a time, I would have said, sadly, yes, but today I'll say, hell yeah. You want me to show you what movies I've been in? You'll see all the small jobs, big jobs I've done. Take a look at the DVDs. The crow flies in. And then we spend like an hour picking out all the DVDs he says he was in, starting right from The Omen and The Crow, and then even some animated movies where he'd been a voice artist. I can even do the. Arnold Schwarzenegger. The market pressure they use on SNL and Matt TV. Everybody get out! And then he starts to weep. Hey, hey, man, why are you crying? He spreads his wings and hugs my arm, rubbing his beak against it. Hmm? Rubbing his beak against it. Oh, that's right, man. I think this is what they mean by the India experience. You know, you learn the value of humility and understand all that you've accomplished and learn to respect your work. The methods are different for everyone. Mine was getting stoned by a little moron like you. He's still weeping, but his accent's gone. And then this guy, you know, this protagonist, he wakes up. And when he wakes up, this is what happens. But my eyes open, daylight's already out there. And I'm very much in my senses. What a bad dream. The TV's still on. Before I get up, Danny and Amar burst out laughing and I fall again. Hey, hey, you're up? You're like some fucking big man. You guys start, started this early? Oh, this is just like a second joint, dude. Come on, Alva. You left the window open last night, the AC had fallen flat and you were sweating wet. That explains why I am sweating. Last night, I had the strangest dream. I think I met a talking crow. Oh, did he say he was a Hollywood star? How do you know that? Why, wow, you, you, you've been like hat, dude. The ass bomb like free joints and shit us off. Shit off us, telling us the story like every time, dude. Yeah, man. He like learned to take advantage of the fact that all crows look alike. And then he would sit with us and watch all movies with crows in it. And he would say like every one of them was him and shit like that. Well, this one time I pointed out three crows on screen and he said, Special effects, dude. Special effects. And I was all like, mm, okay. <laughs> then what happened? Shit, I got gone. Then we just like started watching too many movies with crows in them and shit, we got like too bored and then we threw him out of the window and shirt forever. Fucking junky crows, man. So it wasn't a dream. No way! A junky crow is for real. Alright, so this is Jolimodi talk for you and uh...